Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Ladies Professional Racquetball Tour. This is the Boston Open. It's our first semifinal, and it's the one we've all been waiting for. Two versus three. Both of these players have a chance to leave this tournament as the new world number one. Of course, Monse Mejia will have something to say about that as well as the current number one. But one of these players is going home tonight knowing they're not go going to be number one in the world. In the green, Paola Longoria. If you know racquetball, you know her by now. In the black and purple, it's Maria Jose Vargas, who's been on an absolute tear over the last six months, winning tournaments left, right, and center, and taking out Paola Longoria. For the last three times, these two have met. Statistics would say Longoria is the clear favorite with a 32-5 and head-to-head -head record. However, hold on. Over the last five meetings, it's been Vargas who's won four of them. Three straight, in fact, for Vargas. So Vargas seems to have found her number. Can she do it again? Vargas here with her husband. Doesn't often travel with her spouse, so great to see him here. And I wonder, does the... The idea of becoming world number one, is there a little bit of extra pressure there? Now's your opportunity to make your predictions. It's Longoria who's serving first. Just a reminder, Beach Bash coming up after this tournament, March 13th through 17th. Reserve your place in Beach Bash. Here we go, Longoria taking on Vargas. These two have played 37 times against each other. That's clean. Sweet three-shot rally, claiming the first point, Vargas. Vargas will rely heavily on the C-serve to the left side. She did so this morning and hits some excellent drive serves down the left and right. Mm. That's a statement shot from Vargas. And a little lucky bounce down the left side from Vargas. Gives her another point. That's 3-0, all coming on short rallies. What's the call? We'll have a replay. Longoria doesn't like it, thinks about appealing, and we will have an appeal. One disagrees, one agrees, so call stands. Our official Carla Munoz just making sure that appeal was noted because it was an appeal lost. Smart. Vargas went for a lot on that shot. Didn't put it down. It kicked up into the middle. Longoria put it away, 0-3. To my far right is the Longoria camp, and down below me is Team Vargas. Monse Mejia watches on. She's on court next. Clean, smart pass from Longoria.
Mm. Vargas is hitting the ball harder this afternoon than she was this morning, no doubt about it. Vargas was tested by Barrios, won the first fairly comfortably. The, the second one was a much more difficult affair. Longoria, very comfortable winner over Colombian Cristina Amaya. Both of these players in action in doubles as well later this evening. That's just world class, world class. Four serving one. Vargas just missing that ball as it scooted down the left wall. A good start, a good start for the Argentine, one serving four. Not a good serve from Longoria. Kicked off the back wall, and it was Vargas who punished it. Longoria, if you didn't know, yesterday released a, a video announcement. What a serve. What a serve. The short Z. So effective. Yes, Longoria announced her candidacy for Mexican government, as did Samantha Salas. A serve, inch perfect, she'll lose this, I'm sure. Again, one agrees, one disagrees. Timeout from Longoria. It's Vargas who's in control. It's six serving one. Leaning back, watch this from Longoria. I just don't think she anticipated the spin of this ball kicking into her. It was, had a lot coming off that sidewall from Vargas. Another point, 7-1. Screen serve would be my call. Wow, Vargas went for it on second serve. Just a little short. Very risky and paid the price. That C has been effective. Not sure why she didn't go to it. That was all tremendous defense from Vargas. Great shot again. Var Vargas is just playing out of her mind right now. Eight serving one. Not missing a ball. 
Ocho Uno, says our official. There's the Z. Skip ball, no. Winner from Longoria. Fargus had her chance. Longoria hasn't served many times in this match. Big thank you to Stuart Solomon, Solomon Racket and Sports, USAR president. This is his tournament. He's the tournament director. He's done so much to make this such a great event. Longoria looking to Kelly Bean, former junior USA head coach for instructions. Mm, that was close. Not worth appealing though, simply because what do you get but a first serve? Players are entitled to three failed appeals. And that time Vargas skips one deep in the backcourt. Great serve, I counted 15 seconds between the rallies. Wonder if our official's keeping an eye on that too. Longoria does take her time. We saw that serve in doubles yesterday from Longoria, very effective, winning a few ace serves and I think whoever if Longoria does make the final, whoever gets there will have to be wary of that serve. It's quite effective. Mm. Vargas went for it, and you can see Longoria, I think, deliberately slowing things down here. Gloria went for it and missed it. Vargas back in the service box. It's eight serving three. Love to see Vargas throw in a, a jam serve once in a while. And the difference in power between those two on the backhand side there was very evident. Longoria pushed the ball back. Vargas struck it. Vargas did really well to get that ball, but Longoria took her time, backed up, forcing her opponent to the left side, opening up the right, and then executed perfectly. Oh my goodness, take a look at this. It was the footwork from Vargas. It ball almost came into her body a little bit, which forced the miss. Longoria is getting back into this match. It's called short. Let's take a little look. Mm, I think it was good.
Vargas doesn't let it affect her. Maintains the composure. The call was overturned. A point was given to Longoria. A serve down the right side. Longoria, though, has been stuck at nine for a little while. It's a great cross court winner from Longoria. Plenty of people watching on around us, standing room only, including a number of the pro players as well. Certainly a, one of the more intense matches we've had in some time. What a shot. Leaning back. Vargas may think about a timeout here. I know I would. Maybe one more point, says Vargas. And straight down the line. Here does come the timeout. We're going to take a timeout, too. It's seven, serving nine. Here we go. Longoria was up 8-1, and now, excuse me, Vargas was up 8-1, and now it's 7-9. Great run from Longoria. And you can see that it's Longoria who's doing more of the shooting. She missed that one, but has really put Vargas on the defensive. Early in this match, it was Vargas who was attacking, who was executing the shots. Great timeout from Vargas. And a great down the line. Textbook. comes the Z. And it just kicked off enough for Longoria to execute. If I was Vargas, I would be asking the referee for a time check. What a shot. It wasn't a bad shot from Vargas, but it was 
right into the wheelhouse of Longoria. She was waiting for it. Eight serving 10. Forced air from Longoria. Don't say that too often. That time Longoria was ready for it. Saw it coming across. It wasn't as short as normal. Taking the step. Excellent shot down the right side. High quality match so far. Shoulder high. Crowd like it around us. That is too good. Both of these players playing extremely well. And there's another example. Longoria is going to take her second and final timeout. Vargas just questioning what was going on. Longoria takes the timeout. We'll be back in just a minute. We're here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Jessica Parrilla and I play with Gearbox. A uh, great athlete is made uh, about discipline, effort, constance. And before to be a great athlete, you have to be a great person. One of my future goals is be on the top three in the professional tour again. I did it once and I think I can, I can go back there. I, I enjoy the passion of the game. I enjoy the passion of the life, of everything. And I always think like love is the first thing in everything. The things I think, the things I say, and the things I do are on the same line. And enjoy, because we don't know how long we're gonna be here. So enjoy and give love to others as much as we can. Back in, it's eight serving 10. <laughs> Farkas gets her chance. Oh, goodness, that was risky. Left side, shoulder high, up against the wall. Vargas went for broke. Hit the back glass as her racket swung through, and it completely messed up that shot. Nine serving 10. Ten serving 10. Excellent serving from Longoria. We'll have an appeal for a court hinder. I don't know why she's not appealing. No. Strange. Vargas clearly saw a bad bounce off this back. We have a great down by the back glass. Sometimes creates unusual bounces. Now Longoria leads. And she leads by two, and it's coming from excellent serving, creating three-shot rally opportunities.
Excellent defense from Longoria. You saw Vargas scooting all the way back, and this time she, Vargas, will be taking her second and final timeout. Longoria leads 13-10. And we're back in. It's finally poised. This tournament supports the Frontline Family Foundation. Stuart Solomon, USAR president, was on air earlier talking about that. So great to see racquetball supporting initiatives in local communities. Here we go, Longoria, two points away from game one. But side out, Mongoria doesn't like the bad bounce off the back wall. You saw Vargas raise her hand during that rally, thinking it was a bad bounce herself, and then plays through it. Hand down, keep going. That's much better. And a great finish. Longoria, no doubt, will appeal this. I thought it was good. So she asked, did she have any appeals remaining? This time it's the opposite. The line judges cannot agree. They keep flipping. Call stands, Longoria, no appeals remaining. Another bullet serve. Oh my goodness. Crowd like it around here. Why wouldn't you? Look at that. Vargas going back to what got her to eight, serving one, and it was outstanding serving and aggressive hitting. Goodness, what a point. Back and forth these two, Vargas covering a lot of court to stay in that rally and then got her chance and put it away on her knees to finish. Great point. Well, Vargas tried to Dig it out of her shoes. Little wrist flick, it didn't pay off. Side out. Ace serve. Two in a row. Two aces in a row for Paola Longoria to claim this first game. I mentioned that it had been deadly in doubles yesterday, and it certainly has been, and it's been the difference maker in this first game. So we're going to game two. Vargas has work to do. We'll be back in just two minutes.
The mission of FSU Coach is to prepare and equip the next generation of coaches and sports professionals with best practices and current research to enable them to pursue excellence. We have two academic programs, the online graduate certificate, which is four classes, and also a 10 class master's in athletic coaching. Our graduate certificate and master's program can be started at any time, either the, the summer, fall, or spring. All of our classes have the word coach or coaching in them, and they're taught by coaches for coaches. The types of classes that we offer focus on the athlete as a whole person. We focus on the theory and practice, the research, the helping skills, uh, even some of the mental performance behind you know, what it goes into being an athlete. I came to FSU Coach because I truly believed in the mission and the purpose of the program. I think I have my dream job being a head coach at Florida State, but I know there's always more ways that I can help my athletes and better prepare as a coach, so I thought joining this master's program would help me um, learn different ways to uh, attack my job. If you're interested in going into coaching or joining the FSU Coach Program, I would just say don't even think about it and do it. And we're back in. Curious what, sure, what Longoria is asking our official Carla Munoz. Munoz is in the back cleaning the back glass. I think just to improve her vision on some of these bullet serves from both players. It's been a great game so far. Thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate all the shares as we get racquetball around social media. I know high school nationals are going on this weekend. IRT are playing this weekend. Hey, find yourself three screens and watch it all. Okay, here we go, Vargas serving. Great shot by Vargas. Kelly Bean over to our right, very vocal about a footfall. You have to admire that Vargas giving everything, hitting the floor at any opportunity to get that ball back, but Longoria maintaining the composure and executing the finish. That's so smart. Vargas needs to remember that this down the line on the backhand is successful. Longori, I think the focus for her is execute serves, take the third shot and go for it. Perfect pass from Longoria. A little surprised Vargas has gone away from the Z. We saw, yes, Longoria did win a return of a nice return of serve on the Z. But most often Longoria struggled with it. Push that backhand, it slowed it down, allowing Vargas in the middle of the court to control the last shot. She did, side out. Oh. 
There it is. That's the Z-serve I was referring to. Longoria doesn't look particularly comfortable with it. In doubles last night, she tried to cut a few off. Ball passed too close to the body of Vargas. So second serve, that's a fault serve, screen serve. It's another really good serve. Vargas backpedaled. I think a better opportunity might have been to take that ball early. Of course, it's easy to say with hindsight, right? Vargas could have rolled it, and we would have discussed how great a shot it was and a great shot selection. <laughs> 32 and 5, Longoria leads head to head. But Vargas has won four of the last five and the last three. By the way, three of the last five went tiebreaker. Vargas again changing her mind and then not able to recover. We'll have an appeal. Let's take a look. Mm. One who disagrees, one agrees. So two serving two. And Vargas skipped it. Great effort from the Argentine. Got the opportunity. What a wonderful effort to retrieve that ball. Had it right there. Couldn't put it away. And you wonder how much fatigue is going through the body of Maria Jose Vargas right now. Nice soft shot from Longoria. Longoria uh, Vargas looking back at her husband for something. Not sure what she was smiling at. She's down 4-2. Oh. <laughs> How do you do this, Maria Jose Vargas? On one knee, pinch winner, side out. What's the call? Looks like an avoidable hinder to me too. Vargas doesn't like it, she will appeal. One agrees, one disagrees. Two appeals lost, and it's only four serving two. 
tight game so far. Intense, intense competition. Well, that time the crack ace didn't work. Vargas was right there and buries it. Excellent serve. Skip ball. Vargas now starting to make the unforced errors. Well, Longoria is feeling it clearly because that normally is a ceiling ball. Longoria said, I don't think so. Hits it above her shoulder, cross court to the right side. Five serving two. Another point, Vargas will take a timeout, I'm sure. And we're starting to see it more and more. Longoria is just controlling the points. Vargas doesn't have a response. And that's just a clinic from Longoria, moving her opponent from side to side. You can't question the effort of Maria Jose Vargas, but it's Longoria who's controlling this match. She's up 7-2 with a timeout. Welcome back, everybody. It's seven serving two in favor of the number three seed, Longoria. Just a reminder, three players can walk away from this tournament as world number one. And I know Longoria will want to claim that title again. Vargas has never achieved it. Mejia currently holds it. Longoria, if you didn't hear the announcement, stated that she is running for election in the Mexican government. She made that post yesterday on social media, as did Samantha Sala. So question is, how long will Longoria continue to play? Maybe she wants to walk away as world number one. Seven serving two. Vargas used the timeout effectively. Hit the ball pack past Longoria as Longoria was looking left.
That's clean hitting. Fist pump from Longoria. Vargas going to the ceiling too much. Playing the defensive game against somebody who can play that game a little better. And then Longoria just controlling things right now. Seven serving two. There's a scream from Vargas. She needs to find that, that intensity. That feeling of dominance she had when she was up 8-1 in game one. Much better serve, but good defense from Longoria. And then an unforced error from Longoria. Vargas needed that. Ace, four, seven. Longoria got a court hinder replay from the light could have gone either way. Fargus wish it, wished it was a no call. Missed that forehand. And should have been put away. This serve, everyone take note, this serve is working. Longoria's had at least, at least four aces from that serve. And Vargas taking second and final timeout. It's eight serving four. Look at that. Well, a little unusual from Vargas, but now has an opportunity, must go on a run here. But it, the serve let her down and Longoria just calmly and smoothly hit it to the front wall. Smart. Points to her head, Longoria. Look at that, just guiding it down the left side. It's always had a 
unusual swing on the backhand side in particular because she doesn't change grip forehand to backhand. But it works for her. She's the GOAT for a reason. Better from Vargas, three shot rally. Vargas hasn't had the free points from the serve like Longoria's had. get a sense of inevitability about this match. Longoria with her nose in front rarely loses, rarely loses at all, really. About a 90% win ratio over her career. Soft hands. The power of Vargas is not working for her at the moment because the control of Longoria is greater than the power of Vargas. Wow. Maria Jose Vargas sacrificing her body to win that rally. Impressive. But we've seen Vargas on the floor too much for her camp's liking. Chasing balls, not hitting them. Ooh. It's going to be an avoidable hinder. One agrees, one disagrees. The line judges stand one on the left, one on the right, and each one gets a different view of what happened. Few things worse than getting hit and having to give up the avoidable hinder to your opponent. Double punishment. Coming up after this, Mejia, the one seed, the world number one, taking on her doubles partner, Alexandra Herrera. They played just a few weeks ago, and it was a tiebreaker. Can Mejia get to another final and continue her? claim as the world number one. A lot of pressure will be on Mejia for that. But Longoria is just playing very well right now, controlling the pace, controlling the power.
No, it's just too good. Too good. Longoria feeling it. Comfortable. Just hitting winners from everywhere. Vargas. Can't question her commitment. She's giving everything, but Longoria is playing the better racquetball at the moment. Big thank you to the Wayside Athletic Club for allowing us to be here. Just wonder if fatigue is starting to creep into the game of Vargas. This is the fourth year in a row we've been at the Wayside Athletic Club. Great racquetball community here. They know the sport very well. Vargas finally gets set up in the middle of the court and finally executes. And again, I just a little late, Vargas, trying to pick this ball up. Lunged at it, and Longoria is going to take a timeout. She's up 13-5. She's two points away from this match. So 13-5. No, that was short. We'll have an appeal. I think it's more of a hopeful appeal. Line judges agree, call stands. And it brings up, well, Vargas thinks it's skipped. So we'll have an appeal. I didn't get a good look at it. So the line judges this time agree and overturn the call. And there it is. Longoria claims it, advances to the final over the two seed, 15-13, 15-5. Well, coming up after this, players are already here. It's Mejia against Herrera in our other semifinal. Hope you stick with us for that. 
On behalf of myself, Tim Baggers, Jay Josie, TJ Bomba, the commissioner, thanks so much for watching.